Hi, I'm James. I'm the manager of the vet department here at Auckland Zoo, and I'm also one of the veterinary advisors to Carcapur Recovery. So Carcapur are one of our amazing native species, and like so many of New Zealand's native species, they're really threatened. So Carcapur are critically endangered. There's only just over 200 left. Cloacitis is one of the uh, biggest threats to Carcapur in terms of disease. The first case was found in 2002, and because each bird wears a backpack transmitter, the battery lasts a year, and so each bird is caught up once a year for a health check and to have the battery on the transmitter changed. And so we can say with real confidence that, that this disease didn't occur before 2002. The moderate and severe cases are a, are a threat to the individual bird's life. The birds that arrive here at the hospital are profoundly unwell, so they're dehydrated, they're really thin body condition. So we initially provide pain relief, fluids to rehydrate, high quality nutrition to start to counteract the uh, low body condition. So currently we've got four carcapur in with cloacitis. The three here have been under treatment for about a week or two. They've all arrived at different times. And so really what we're doing this morning is giving them treatment, examine them, examine the cloaca, see how the lesions are progressing, um, and then give them their oral treatment via a crop tube. So I've put a little bit of food in the tube, which creates like a little plug, and then we put all the medicines in. So there's, they're all on slightly different medication, but they've got two different antibiotics, two different painkillers, and then they also have some topical treatment. And Bravo's up first, as you can hear. So in three days, he's put on 61 grams. So most carcapur, when they're doing well in the hospital, put on about 10 grams a day, but he's doubling that. But that's because Bravo's a really calm, confident bird. So the problem they have is cloacitis. The cloaca is the single opening where all the, the urine and the feces and the reproductive tract um, all meets in one place. And you can see with Bravo, he's got this yellow scab here on the right hand side. So under this scab, there's a, a deep ulceration and that's the, the inflammation and the infection. So we give it a little, um, a light cleaning every day with water. And then we put, just put this topical antiseptic cream on as well. So the crop is a pouch of the esophagus. So the food pipe goes from his mouth. And then they have this little pouch here, which in the wild, that's where they, they chew up all their plant material and then store the food and then go and sit somewhere while it digests for a little while. So that's what we're doing today. We're just giving them some, some special bird food into the same place. So the gag stops them biting on the tube and then following the medications goes this smoothie worth of bird food. Here we go. So far, new cases of cloacitis have only been found on Fenuaho, which is one of the two main breeding islands. Over the years, it's slowly increasing in frequency. Normally, we would see one or two or perhaps three cases in a year. In 2021, we've had nine cases of cloacitis. One of those has been managed on the island and the other eight have ended up coming up to the hospital here at Auckland Zoo. There's a wide range in presentation from a single very mild ulcer that goes away in a few weeks without any treatment and actually you know a significant number of cases that's what happens so so a lot of birds with this disease don't need to leave the island the moderate and severe cases are clearly extremely painful to the bird the ulcers go deeper we think bacterial infection sets in as a secondary infection and that causes all sorts of other problems makes them lose weight, it's incredibly painful. And so we found through experience that they need to come up to a vet hospital and we give them all the treatment they need. And typically over somewhere between six and 10 weeks, those lesions heal. Um, we're um, going to get Bunker out of his little box he's been hiding now. So normally we would at this time just feed them, but because we want to get some blood to recheck, you know, when they come in, they have an infection and we can see in the blood cells all these changes. So what we're going to do today is take a new blood sample to follow up again. 
So this is not a full anesthesia, it's a sedation, but usually they're quite sleepy on it. Oh, very good boy. So one of the important diagnostic samples we take is a blood sample. Seeing signs of inflammation is not unexpected in severe cases where the cloaca is obviously inflamed. But what we're hoping is that data we're gathering here might help us assess birds on the island to understand which birds might be okay being left and which birds might need to come off the island. We're hoping that the data we're gathering from the blood sample results will help us understand that process as well as help us understand the health of the individual birds. What I'm gonna do now is flush with um, saline, like uh, sterile water. I flush back and forth and then I draw that up and that's what we're then gonna use to look under the microscope. Oh, you know already what's coming. Huh? So we take fecal samples and what we call crop washes. So the crop is a, a little pouch at the base of a, a parrot's neck. So in the wild, the parrots would eat their food, fill up their crop, and then they go and sit somewhere and the first bit of the digestive process would occur. So when a bird is sick and when it's on treatment, we can get infections in that crop. And so we take samples where we flush sterile fluid into the crop and then suck it back out again and then have a look at the cells. This is the crop wash we took earlier from Bunker. We're going to have a look to see what bacteria is currently present in the crop and if there are any yeasts. So there's four stages to the stain that we use. It's a gram stain. We've all got different times that we need to wait. What this does is this stains the different bacteria that are on the slides to different colours. So if we're seeing purple bacterias, then they are what we call positive bacterias. And if they're stained red or pink, then it means they're negative bacterias. Here you have a normal interstitial cell, and that means that we have done a really good crop wash. Uh, because of the fact that we're getting some of the natural cells from the crop. Today we've seen very little. We've seen a few of the gram-positive cocoa, which just look like little purple dots in the uh, stain, and we've seen a few of the cells which have come from the crop. It does mean that we haven't introduced any of the bad bacteria and no infection or yeast infection has occurred. Despite 20 years of research, we still don't know what causes cloacitis. So we're really happy that we know how to cure cases that are bad. But of course, what we really all want to do, we all want to find the underlying cause and if we can then prevent that. So we've got a lot of parallel research going on. The dock rangers working for Carcapore Recovery collect a lot of data from the birds on the islands during those annual health checks. So providing the care to Karkapur that they need is a real team effort. So DOC, the Department of Conservation's Karkapur Recovery, have been working really hard since the 90s to save the species from going extinct. Definitely a big collaboration that are working really hard to try and understand the disease and to try and find a preventative strategy. Auckland Zoo's been working with Karkapur Recovery for 20 years. The vet department has been particularly closely involved you know, the vets and the vet nurses, but also the, the bird keepers. Um, a number of the keepers have been trained up to help with the transmitter changes and the health checks that occur each year. And then each breeding season, a number of bird keepers, vet nurses and vets are all involved in helping care for the, the neonatal carcapo chicks. When we have a lot of carcapo here at the hospital, the bird keepers are able to come and help us with the husbandry and the administration of antibiotics and all those skills that their experts are providing for the, the birds in the rest of the zoo, they can come and use those same skills looking after Karkapur here in the hospital and Karkapur on the island. One of the unique things about working at the vet hospital here at Auckland Zoo is that we get to work with patients like Karkapur where we know that making the individual patient better is obviously important to the individual but it also has a direct positive effect on the future population of the species and on the survival of the species and, and for me personally that's what this is all about. This is the sort of work I've spent my whole life uh, trying to 
trying to do. And yeah, on a personal note, it's just awesome to see these birds go home back where they belong and contribute to the population in the future.